Hey, Star Trek fans, welcome to another episode of the Star Trek News Desk. I'm back from a week on vacation, and wouldn't you know it, we've got a ton of Star Trek Discovery news that all dropped while I was gone. Of course, that's the way it always goes. So sit back, relax, put your feet up, grab a drink, and let's dive deep into all of the Star Trek Discovery news from the past week. First off, as I mentioned in a previous video, Star Trek Discovery will have a rather significant presence at the San Diego Comic-Con this week. So here's a quick rundown of all of the panels and events surrounding Star Trek Discovery at SDCC. First off, the highlight event will be the Meet Starfleet Star Trek Discovery panel that will be on Saturday, July 22nd at 2.30pm in Ballroom 20. This is a huge panel featuring the cast members from Star Trek Discovery, Sonequa Martin-Green, Jason Isaacs, Doug Jones, Shazad Latif, Mary Wiseman, Anthony Rapp, and James Frain, alongside executive producers Alex Kurtzman, Gretchen J. Berg, Heather Caden, Aaron Harberts, and Akiva Goldsman. The panel will be moderated by Rain Wilson, who is guest starring in Star Trek Discovery as Harry Mudd. Another presence that Star Trek Discovery will have at the San Diego Comic-Con is the Star Trek Discovery Gallery Takeover. Now this is starting tomorrow, Thursday, July 20th, and will run through the entire convention until Sunday, July 23rd. This exhibit will be at the Michael J. Wolf Fine Arts Gallery at 363 Fifth Avenue. Comic-Con badges are not mandatory for entry to this exhibit. It will feature the USS Discovery Captain's Chair and will also showcase props, costumes, sketches, and more from the show. Now each day at this exhibit, 1,000 fans will receive complimentary limited edition Discovery posters. And of course there will be an official Star Trek shop with items exclusive to Comic-Con available there. Also running throughout the convention are the Star Trek Discovery pedicabs. These are pretty cool. They feature a captain's chair style seat. The chair has video monitors built into the armrests, which will screen trailers for the new show. And each vehicle will have an illuminated USS Discovery Delta Shield on the back of the cab. These look really cool. I would love to go to Comic-Con just to ride around in one of these things. And finally, on Friday, July 21st and Saturday, July 22nd, you will find the hashtag Trek Discovery Challenge. Throughout the convention, you will find an array of authentically costumed Star Trek ambassadors representing crews from five of the Star Trek television series, the original series, The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Enterprise. Now, fans who are able to post photos of themselves with each of the five series crew, and also in the Discovery Captain's Chair at the Michael J. Wolf Fine Arts Gallery, and who tag all six photos with the hashtag TrekDiscoveryChallenge on Twitter or Instagram, will be eligible to win a Roku streaming stick and a subscription to CBS All Access. Now, please note these prizes are awarded on a first-come, first-served basis. You can find clues for the location of the Trek Discovery crews by following at Star Trek on Twitter and on Instagram. Also revealed this past week is this brand new poster for Star Trek Discovery. A really visually striking design here. I love the colors in this poster, but most importantly, it gives us our first really close-up look at the design of the USS Discovery. You may remember about a month ago we got that top-down view, but it was very small and a little bit limited. This time we get a close and detailed look at the entire ship, the saucer section, the secondary hull, and the warp engines here. And I gotta say, this gives us a really interesting glimpse into the design of the ship, so let's take a quick look at that now. First off, this does provide definitive confirmation that there are gaps in the primary hull of the ship, kind of open areas. Uh, kind of a design that, you know, I have a few questions about. It doesn't seem to be the most practical design. However, it does follow the Bilk rule, B-I-L-C, because it looks cool, of course. But, you know, it does look interesting. I, I don't really know the technical reason why they would have this, but it does look cool. Also, it looks as though that center orb, that middle part of the saucer section, might also have some gaps between it and the surrounding hull. Some definitely interesting design choices there. From there, we go down the connecting dorsal neck to the secondary hull, and we've got the deflector dish, our first close-up look at the new design of that. 
Now this is interesting. It looks like it has those two prongs on it, kind of reminiscent of the Columbia's deflector dish from Star Trek Enterprise, as well as what we've seen of the Shenzhou's deflector dish in that early teaser trailer. Continuing on down the secondary hull, we have these spots here on the starboard side, and I'm assuming also the port side of the deflector dish. I'm wondering if those are large hangar bays. They look almost like they could be doors, not quite sure, but really interesting. It looks like there could be a lot of room for huge shuttle bays or something like that in the Discovery. An interesting Aztec pattern on the secondary hull, of course, and we get the final version of the warp nacelles. So definitely the same sort of design elements that we saw in that first teaser way, way, way back when, but definitely some refined elements I think a much better looking ship, and I really can't wait to see it in a fully rendered, fully functional version on screen here instead of the stylized art in the poster here. So really looking forward to seeing the ship in action. With Star Trek Discovery making waves at Comic-Con this weekend, you can be sure that there will be a lot of new Star Trek Discovery news, and Entertainment Weekly is teasing a little bit of that already. Entertainment Weekly has published the first look at Klingon Officer Lorel, played by Mary Chieffo. In this photo from the upcoming July 21st Comic-Con preview issue, we see Lorel alongside Takuvma, played by Chris Obi. Lorel has been revealed as Takuvma's battle deck commander. There's also another new photo showing the USS Shenzhou's Captain Georgiou and First Officer Commander Michael Burnham. The article also talks a little bit more about the mentoring relationship between Captain Georgiou and Commander Burnham, revealing that the captain has mentored Burnham for seven years at the behest of Sarek as she rose through the Federation ranks. Sinequa Martin-Green herself had this to say, I think it's interesting to have these two women of color in top positions of leadership. They're both strong women and have this mother-daughter relationship. Very excited to learn more about the relationship between these two characters and to finally see it on screen this September. Speaking of Klingons, recently executive producer Aaron Harbert spoke a little bit on the controversial new look of the Klingons. In the different versions of Trek, the Klingons have never been completely consistent, Harbert said. We will introduce several different houses with different styles. Hopefully fans will become more invested in the characters than worried about the redesign. Now, like a lot of Star Trek fans out there, I have a few reservations about the new look of the Klingons. However, it is definitely a species that has seen many different permutations over the years. And like Harbert says, I'm really hoping they get the stories and the characters right, while the designs themselves are definitely a secondary concern. I'm sure that Harbert's comments might not go over that well with a lot of Trek fans, but I'm still adopting a wait-and-see attitude. Recently, executive producer Alex Kurtzman spoke to CNET about Star Trek Discovery, and here's a little bit of what he had to say. The story that we have for season one is really interesting and special and pays tribute to a lot of what Trek has done and in many ways is actually doing it in a new way. To have Sinequa and Michelle as captains of our ship is really, really exciting and different. I love stories that are based around strong women and we have some strong women on that show. Having Sinequa, she is a very, very special actress, is bringing a flavor to the character which I haven't really seen in Trek and that is really exciting. Her story is very unique and draws on some really interesting things in Trek lore. I think fans will both appreciate, and I'm certain it will be a cause of much debate. I love what he had to say about Discovery respecting Star Trek canon as well. Quote, You have got a room full of people with very different and very devoted relationships to Star Trek in that writer's room, and that carries on a pretty proud tradition of Trek being written by fans. You have to respect canon as it's being written. You cannot say that never happened. No, 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 you can't do that. They would kill you. Star Trek fans would kill you. No, you have to respect canon. You have to understand the timelines and what the different timelines were and what the different universes were and how they all worked together. You have to keep very meticulous track of who, what, where, when, and why. And we have people in the writer's room whose sole job is to say, nope, can't do that. As far as jobs in Star Trek go, I would love to have that one. I think I would be perfect at that. On Gene Roddenberry's vision of Star Trek, Kurtzman had this to say, I think that the core of Roddenberry's vision, and I think that is why it has endured for as long as it has, is the belief that human beings will always find a way to persevere and to connect to each other, and that there is an optimistic outlook to where we can be going. And now more than ever, we need that desperately. So he gives you hope. 
Star Trek gives you hope. This has always been my favorite thing about Star Trek and why I think I've gravitated towards it through most of my life. I love the optimistic look of Star Trek and the hope that it gives for the future. And I'm really, really happy to hear the people behind the scenes saying these words and echoing that philosophy of Gene Roddenberry's. Recently, a little bit more about Doug Jones' character, Lieutenant Saru, has been revealed by Entertainment Weekly. Writer-producer Aaron Harbert spoke with EW about Lieutenant Saru, saying that what we can tell you that adds the context to that clip where he says he can sense the coming of death is that he comes from a planet where he's a prey species. He's the first of his kind to make it to Starfleet. That makes a lot of sense. I was a little confused by the character's ability to sense death coming as revealed in that trailer, but it makes a lot more sense that he's a prey species and can sense when danger is approaching and has heightened senses in that way. Apparently on Lieutenant Saru's planet there is a dominant predator species that constantly threatens another weaker species called the Kelpians. I'm assuming that means that Saru's species is the Kelpians? Jones had this to say about the character. Producer said Saru is the Spock of the series, he's the data of the series, and those are beloved characters that I always connect with whenever I would watch the past incarnations of Star Trek. On Falling Skies, I played an alien species who came to Earth to help the humans fight back the bad aliens who'd taken over, and I was intelligent, well-spoken, had a lot of answers, and science-y smart. Saru is all of those things, and then some. Jones is sure to be a highlight of the Comic-Con panel for Star Trek Discovery, and I'm looking forward to learning more about this character. Finally, there have been some recent videos showing off the new props for the Star Trek Discovery series, notably the communicator, the phaser, and the phaser rifle. I'd like to make a second video where I dissect those reveals and talk about all the various details on those props, so keep an eye out for that. I should be putting that out in the next day or so. In the meantime, if you have any Star Trek news tips, be sure to follow me and tweet at me on Twitter. I'm at Kurtrats, that's K-E-R-T-R-A-T-S. You can also find me on Facebook.com slash Productions. Please like, share, and subscribe this video if you found it worthy. I really enjoy making these, and I hope to have a lot more Star Trek discussions news for you soon. I'll see you in the next video.